In regards to time and flies in particular, this particular pike fly on this now obsolete five inch long shank hook uh, doesn't do a good job of hooking the fish. They also get a lot of leverage on the fly because of the extra long shank. So my proposal to circumvent that problem and to make things a little bit more user friendly, we're dealing with a salmonid and as we know all, sal all salmonids tend to be nippers. They nip at the back of the fly often. So we're going to do this in a series of shanks. This is a one-aught hook. This is a four-aught hook. We're going to attach these hooks with solid stainless steel wire shanks. And the reason why we're using the solid stainless instead of nylon coated is because we're dealing with fish that may reach 100 pounds or more. And with these fish, we found that they tend to separate the wire from the flies rather quickly if we just tie it down and even if we super glue it down to the hook shank. So by passing the wire through the hook eye, we have a solid direct connection that still allows our fly to have the great wiggling movement, articulated motion that we're looking for. So we're going to build this fly in a series of four steps and still come up with the same length that we're trying to achieve and using the same material. Let's get into how we're going to form that material. So here we have a swatch of Hairline's Extra Select Craft Fur. This is the best craft fur to use because of its density and the fact that it has three different lengths of hair on it, culminating in one that's nearly four inches. So now let's take a look at the back side of this and this is where the magic really happens. I'll try to get this close to the lens. If you notice there's a stitch line that goes across this way. And the idea here is that we're going to cut across this stitching like so. And you want to keep your width somewhere around 3 eighths of an inch wide. If you get it too narrow you won't capture enough hair and the hair will pull out. If you get it too wide, it'll make it a little bit more difficult to handle and it'll make it too bulky. So generally what I do is I just kind of spread the hair off of the backing a little bit. And this doesn't have to be too scientific. You don't need to brush it out or anything. I just want to make a little space here. Then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm not going to hold them open real wide. I'm going to keep them narrow so I don't cut too much hair off the backing. And starting right down here at the bottom, I'm just going to cut in a relatively straight line all the way up. I will inadvertently cut some of these fibers and we're not going to get too concerned about that. That's not, uh, that's not a real big issue and they'll just pull out as we go into the next step here. So now we've got this strip and as you can see all the stitching marks are going perpendicular to our cut and uh, to make it a little waterproof and that's this, the tear mender. It's uh, a latex base adhesive that's just about instant. It's, uh, it works really well on fabric and on leather for double bunnies and things like that. So I'm just going to give this a bit of a shake here. I'll twist open the top and I'm just going to lay a bead of this all the way down this strip. And it doesn't have to be a real heavy bead. It kind of takes care of itself. Once I get to that point, I'm going to grab both ends of this and squeeze them together over the top of themselves, like so. Now, as I pull, you can see the material wrapping itself into a circle and literally forming its own chenille. So all I have to do is wait for this to dry. It usually takes about maybe three to five minutes for it to dry. So generally what I do is I put some weight on one end and I just hang it up 
and give it a few minutes to dry. Okay, our cement has dried. As you can see, this is just a really big piece of chenille that we created. If you look closely, you can see the glue seam, but it's not real visible. And even though it didn't make the, the interior core of this completely waterproof, at this width and this diameter, it wraps itself into a circle all by itself. We don't have to do anything special to do that. We now have a product that we can build our fly body with. So let's proceed with our first end of our shank. And the reason for putting this little wrap down here is just to give me some place to hold it securely in my fly tying vise. I've bent this wire by hand using a simple jeweler's pliers. It bends readily. It's easy to work with. You take a piece of the wire and I usually start about an inch back and depending on how large a diameter of ring I want to put in it depends on where I start on the pliers. I usually start about an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch up. I'll bend the wire back first just about 90 degrees, not quite, maybe uh, 70 degrees or so. Then I'll wrap that all the way around the jaw. So I'm at this point. I'll continue wrapping until I come all the way back around. And I'll grab that right down about even with the kink that I put in the first time and just bend the wire back. That will give me a nice small diameter ring that I'm looking for. So now that I've got my ring made, and this is 125 pound test wire, uh, roughly 57 kilograms. All I do is I put a little loop on the end of it, just enough to, uh, to hold it in my vise. So I'm just going to trim the wire, grab the wire, and just rotate this around my pliers to get to my desired length. And it can be trimmed off afterwards if you want to trim it off. Uh, usually I leave it on because it, it helps to keel the fly up in the back and keep it swimming straight. And I'll make sure that I have this perpendicular so that when I place it on my wire that I've already made to hold the hook on, this goes through the hook eye. And this small diameter wire still doesn't interfere with the hook eye. These two will fit together like so and there's my articulation. And I can keep building that as many times as I want to going forward to whatever length I want to create. So that's where we'll start. We'll start with our wire that's set up for the tail of the fly. And we'll just keep working our way forward until we get all the way to the front end. Let's have some fun.